Trev and I met a year ago um, in Salzburg. We were um, going to rehearse and going on a tour with the Camerata Academica in Salzburg. And this is how we met after rehearsal. We spent um, three very short hours together on the train on the way to Vienna, talking about everything and anything that was coming to our minds. It was just a joy and a great way to start making music together. Well, we were doing the Ebert Concerto, which is a fantastic piece when I was conducting. But, um, but on the keyboards, my immediate thought was of the Bach sonatas, which are favourites of mine, and which more recently I've realised um, I've been playing since before Emmanuel was born, amazingly, because I started playing them when I was a teenager. And so it, this is fantastic. Uh, well, I grew up. Uh, listening and being so enthusiastic and so taken, so thrilled uh, by your Brandenburg concerti. And, and so my first encounter with Trevor was actually with Bach's music. And it's now a kind of fulfillment for me and a great feeling to be able to, to, um, to play this music. <laughs> And do you find, I mean, Bach was, of course, a you know, famous improviser. Do you find that there's that improvisatory quality within this music? Of course, I'm obliged to improvise quite a lot in at least the continuo sonatas, the ones that we do with the cello as well, because that has the shorthand of the figured bass, just the bass line with the figures, which tell me what the harmonies are, and then I'm obliged to improvise the rest. Bach's writing for the flute um, becomes in the uh, sonatas with continuo or with the um, with the obbligato uh, harpsichord um, does become more instrumental and matches the the instrument better, I would say, than in his solo flute uh, work, where I think it is really very close to his writing for the string instruments like in the cello suites or the violin uh, sonatas or partitas for violin alone. In the flute partita for flute alone, it's again the same, uh, same kind of writing. While in the, in the sonatas, he avoids carefully to be exactly in the same range like the harpsichord mm -hmm. and uh, the alternating, the, the voicing, the whole, the whole way it's written is, is very well thought and very well organized. There's mostly always a place to breathe uh, before there's a long bit uh, to be achieved. But I must say, he does expect a lot of his players. He never lets you off lightly, whatever mm. instrument, or even if he's writing for voices too, he expects almost superhuman things. He expects us to match him, and that's quite a task. He arranged various pieces for different instruments and of course he arranged things for harpsichord. Early in life he arranged orchestral concertos for Valdi and others for the harpsichord. And we can see that Bach was always more 
interested in music than in instruments. And we have to be too. Uh, the, an instrument is just the tool of the trade. It's how we get at the music. And so in a certain sense, it doesn't matter what the instrument is, but it always matters what the music is. never interested in playing Bach the way it was taught in a more academic uh, way in the in the conservatory I think I thought it was just not lively or not not true uh, not serving that music well and all these aspects of improvisation that I discovered in the jazz music helped me read and understand Bach's music much better and it very gave me a very different insight to this music and a very different reading and from that moment on I thought I could give it a try I'm glad that I'm glad Emmanuel did. I'm glad you did. Yeah. <laughs>